Very good morning to you all. You're welcome to our devotional service. May God bless you for coming. Amen. Uh, to continue our service, we'll be singing from CGS number 14. CGS number 14. All for a thousand tongues to sing. We'll sing that one, and um, Brother Ayo Ajibola will be leading us. Also, want to appreciate those that started for us to this end. We had uh, the organ voluntary from Br Brother Mike Olabi, and after that, the choir sang "Heavenly Light, Sunlight" by G. H. Cook, and then the trio uh, "Bring Your Vessels, Not a Few" by C. H. Morris. Want to appreciate um, all these that have um, helped us so far. Um, we'll continue. And Brother Ayo will come forward and lead us the congregational songs. <laughs> Oh, 
May his praises always fill our hearts. Amen. We sing again from CGS 604, M604. Blessed be the tie that binds our heart in Christian love. Amen. The fellowship of kindred mind is like that above. We sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> Next one is very close to that, uh, which is 608, CGS 608. Brethren, let us work together in love and peace of God. Amen. May we all work together in love. Amen. Uh, we sing again uh, verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. Amen. Truly, it's going to be sweeter if you are all in one on earth. May God help us to achieve that. I uh, will sing from SSNS this time. SSNS 706. 706. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war. We sing uh, verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 3, 4, and 5. Thank you.
song before prayer will be SSNI 699, 699. Oh, brother, life journey's beginning. Amen. We sing all the three verses. The last verse we sing standing, and we shall remain standing to be led in prayer. <laughs> standing, shall we bow down our heads and uh, Brother Sam Oretuga is going to lead us in prayer. God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Spirit, Amen. the triune God, we thank you for your presence in this meeting. 
We thank you. We praise your holy name. Because that's worthy, O Lord. Many waters has passed. Many calamities, problems. But you saw us through. You healed us. Oh, with your divine hand. Thank you, Lord. You brought us back into your sanctuary to worship God in the beauty of holiness. Oh, it gladdens our heart. It, it, it brings joy into our heart that we can come to our Father's house. We can come to the, your sanctuary in the beauty of holiness and serve you according to the dictates of our heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the divine healing. Thank you for healing when devil rear his ugly head that is going to uh, plague us with pandemic. But you saw us through. We never lost any soul. We never lost the battle. In the world, we will they be counting in the, in, in the news thousands of numbers. But we, we never lost any soul. We never lost a battle. Thank you, God. Thank you, over Brother Isaac. Thank you, over Brother Mark. Thank you, over all our leaders. Thank you, over every one of us. Thank you, we are, we are able to worship you in all our stations. Thank you, Father. We know, as you have gathered us, you don't count in, in your numbers. Even if you say where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in their midst. You are in our midst. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive every heart. Revive each heart, O oh Lord. Send down revival. Put the double portion of your spirit on our leaders. Unction from above that will quicken when we all be happy and we will be revived. Bless the preacher. Bless every one of us. Be in our meeting. We want to go home rejoicing. Amen. By the time we shall go home, let the joy of salvation bubble again in our heart. We will continue to praise your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Son. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. For we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to the house of God. I also want to welcome our internet audience. We are the Apostolic Faith Church, Bexley Headquarters Branch, located at number 13 Penniel Road, DA53EP. If you live close by, you can always come and join us, and we'll be glad to have you around. Let us be praying for some of our choir members who have traveled to Cardiff for their Christmas concert later on this afternoon. I want to pray that God will bless their service Amen. and bring them back safely. Amen. Amen. This evening we'll join again for our virtual prayer meeting at 5 p.m. You're all welcome to attend. And then during the course of the week on uh, Wednesday we are going to have virtual prayer meeting from 7.30 p.m. And then on Friday, we still have a virtual prayer meeting that will be starting at 8 p.m. And as we usually do our Saturdays in the morning, we have a prayer meeting between 8 and 10 a.m. Next Sunday, if Jesus tarries, we shall have our services as usual and uh, we'll be starting with uh, Sunday School for All Ages at 10 a.m., devotional service at 11.15, and then in the afternoon, we'll be having children's Christmas uh, special program. That will be at 5 p.m. You can invite your friends to join us on that special uh, Christmas service for our children. And we pray that it be a great blessing to all of us. Amen. Now we'll continue our service with our first special, which is a choir song, Ye Must Be Born Again by C. George. And then after that, we have a Bible reading from St. John chapter 1. And we'll be reading from verses 26 to 29. The, then we'll have the last special and then the word of exhortation for this morning.
The text for our Bible reading for this service is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, and we'll be reading from verse 26 to verse 29. That is the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, and we'll be reading from verse 26 to verse 29. 26. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes lashed I am not worthy to unloose. 28. These things were done in Bethbara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. my home. Ten thousand foes may surround me to turn me from the right. But God's great arms are around me. His arms of love and might have set my feet on God's road and never will I drift or roam. Have set my feet on God's road. I'll travel till I reach my home. I've set my feet on God's road and never will I turn around. I've left the dreary lowlands. I'm heading for the higher ground. My Lord is walking beside me. He keeps me by his grace. And every step he will guide me till I see him face to face. I've set my feet on God's road and never will I turn around. I've set my feet on God's road. I'm heading for the higher ground and never will I drift or roam and never will I turn around. I'll travel till I reach my home. I'm heading for the So we turn our Bibles to St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. I'll read from uh, verse 21. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? 23. 
And he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. And they which were sent were the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then if thou be not that Christ? And Elias, nor Elias, neither that prophet. 26. And John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who is coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I'm not worthy to unloose. And these things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. 29. And the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God, Amen. which taketh away the sin of the world. We all know who John was. John was that great prophet of God who preached to Israel of the Messiah who was coming. That's what John did. And you'd find the Pharisees were keen to know who John was because of the great works he was doing. But John knew that his position very well he is the voice of the one that sent him. The voice of Christ, our Savior, Amen. who was crying out in the wilderness, yeah. make ye straight the way of the Lord. Amen. And I want to thank God that uh, John did not ascribe any greatness unto himself. He pointed people to Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And he did it in a marvelous way to say, look, there is the Lamb of God. Yeah. Did not end there. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. So without Christ, the world is sinful. Yeah. And I want to thank God that through this Lamb of God, through this great Lamb of God, we, we are here today, Amen. and through this Lamb of God, we have received the salvation of God. Amen. God is great. Yes. And you can imagine, when you are saying, behold the Lamb of God, he was looking at a person, and that was the person, Christ Jesus himself. But he pointed to him and said, that is the Lamb of God. Yeah. <laughs> there is a great message there yeah. in the sense that if you go back to the Old Testament, Abraham saw him. Yeah. Amen. At yeah. Mount Moriah, he saw him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when uh, he was asked to sacrifice his son Isaac, and he took him a three days journey from where he was living, and when he got there, we are told, he told his servants to remain behind and said, I and the son, we are going to worship. Yeah. We all know what kind of worship he was going to do. Because when he got to the spot on Mount, Mar on Mount Moriah, where he was supposed to sacrifice Isaac, he bound him. Then after he bound him, when he was about to strike, angel of the Lord said, stop. Don't do that. Look behind you. And behind him was a lamb caught in the thicket by the horns. Figuratively, that is Christ Jesus. Yes. So instead of Isaac, Christ was slain. Even at that time, as a figure. 
we go to Genesis 22, verses 12 and 13, it says, And he say, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou any harm unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Glory be to God. Abraham, again, we go to Hebrews verse 7, verses 1 to 13. He paid tithes to Melchizedek, who was again a type of Christ's coming. The priest of Salem, who was without mother and without father. In Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, we are told, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And who is a priest forever? Amen. That is Christ Jesus himself. Yes. And right, right now he's doing that priestly uh, position of himself at the right hand side of God, uh, pleading with his own blood for the human race. That whosoever, whosoever believes in him should not perish. That is what we are supposed to look to. Christ Jesus. And when we look to him, he gives us wonderful salvation. We want to thank God for, for, for Christ Jesus. If we come to the time of the law, the children of Israel saw him. Again, as a lamb that was killed on the 14th day of the month, the first month that they kept from the 10th day of the first month when they left Egypt. Uh, this time, the lamb was killed in the evening, nearly the same time that Christ himself gave up ghost on the cross of Calvary. Glory be to God. Amen. In Exodus 12, 3, we are told, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And that lamb was slain. And they took the blood, put it on the door lintels and doorposts, and when the angel of death came by night, they were delivered. Amen. And what a great deliverance that a nation was delivered in a day. Yeah. That was pointing to Christ Jesus. Yes. I want to thank God that God has always appeared to his people. Yeah. And in the same, same manner he appeared to the patriarchs. He appeared during the time of the law. He, he is, all the sacrifices that they were giving were pointing to Christ Jesus himself. Yeah. That's why when John did that proclamation to say, behold the Lamb of God, he was saying, this is what you have been waiting for to this yeah. time. Yeah. And those that looked at him, those that looked to him, he, 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 he changed them. You know, the prophets longed to have seen him physically 
and some of them prophesied of him. They could see him spiritually. If we go to Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 7, it says, Surely he hath borne our griefs, he carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him uh, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Amen. And with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Thank God in the package of this great redemption that God has for us, Amen. we have healing. Amen. That is physical and spiritual healing. Amen. Isaiah went on to say, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Take note of that. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Again, we see here the prophet picturing him or portraying him as the Lamb of God. They saw him way back then. They, they, they wished to have lived during the time when he lived on earth. How about his own parents? Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph. And when, when they saw him, now, when they got the message about him, how Mary cherished that message and how she knew she was carrying the Son of God. And how even after he was born, you know, when uh, at his birth, we have the shepherds in the field, the wise men coming to see him. And the proclamation that was made by Anna the prophet, uh, Simeon, the elderly man, and, you know, they, they came and prophesied of him. They saw him. Actually, Simeon was saying, uh, my time is up. Yeah. Might as well go because I have seen the salvation of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. I, I, I thank God that uh, when John saw him, after he proclaimed this proclamation, if we go to John chapter 1, verse 35, says again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and 36 and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Amen. That was the next day, not yeah. just one day. So he kept on pointing people to Christ because Israel were looking unto him sure. and they could not really tell who John was. He was a man who was just proclaiming that people can be saved and baptizing them. And we know what nature of a prophet he was, that he only fed on honey and locusts with the camels gathered around him. That, that, that's all they knew about him. And they knew him to be a great man of God. And I say, tell us who you are. You know, at times people lose focus of what the real thing is. Yes. And then you find here John saying, look to Jesus. Amen. And in the same way, we point you to Christ Amen. that Jesus can save. Yes. This gospel is about Jesus. Yes. It's the message that Jesus saves. Yes. And it's the message that Jesus who died for our sins, that whosoever, yeah. <laughs> amen, I like that. Yeah. Whosoever, it doesn't matter where you come from, where your origin is, your, what your creed is. Mm -hmm. Jesus saves all. Yes. We want to thank God for Amen. this great salvation Amen. that Christ Amen. came to give us. And if you're in sin, today can be your day. Amen. You can be saved Amen. from your life of sin. Yeah. We want to thank God that it wasn't just these disciples who saw him. You know, when, they, they, when John pointed Christ to them, they followed him. That's what the Bible says. They just started following him. 
And I believe they, they did not just see him physically. I want to believe that their heart yearned for him. Yeah. And there was a change in their life that they said, we want to follow this Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see him, you will follow him. Amen. Amen. And after they've seen him, they, they actually called their brothers. And they asked others to, to come and see him. Yeah. That's where we find Nathaniel and the other disciples being called. Mm. How about the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, where she had a problem of living in adultery. And when she met Jesus and saw him, what he told her was that, if we go to John chapter 4, verses 16 through to 19, She was coming to the well of Jacob to collect some water. And then Jesus asked her of some water to drink. And then she was saying, why, why are you asking for water from me? You know you're a Samaritan. You're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. There, there, there was a problem there. But I want to thank God that uh, Jesus told her that uh, if you knew who is before you. You could have asked him for living waters. <laughs> so she was talking of physical waters, but Jesus was saying, I have living waters with me. Amen. And uh, verse 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Amen. Amen. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up to everlasting life. Amen. It's water that quenches thirst for yes. sin. Yes. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. And after she got that water, we, uh, and during this discourse, we did not know how, whether she actually had opportunity to take any water from that well. Mm. But what we know is she left a water port, mm. went back to the city of Samaria, and there was a great revival yeah. because she had met Christ she had seen Jesus. Amen. You know, when you see him, yeah. you will tell the story now. Yeah, yeah. You will tell others of what Christ can do. Yeah. And you go home, you tell your brothers, you tell your sisters. Yeah. Your neighbors will know yeah. that you have met Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God. Nicodemus. He went to him by night. In John chapter 3, he wanted to hide, if you want to put it that way, he, he wanted to do it secretly. He was a great man of the Pharisees, he had a high position, a ruler of the Jews. But then, because of what Jesus was doing, he knew there was a need for him to go and see him. And he arranged, I don't know how he did it. But what we know is he had an appointment with Jesus. Amen. And he went to Jesus by night. He met him. And when he met him, he said in chapter 3, uh, it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He was right, but Christ told, told him that he was beside the point. You, you may know everything about Jesus, but that, that's not helpful in any way if you have never experienced who Jesus is. Right. True, true. So we, we need to experience him yeah, yeah. by way of salvation. Yeah. And when we know him yeah. that way, we will understand who he is better than those that just know about or know about testimonies that people tell them about Jesus. That's not good enough until you experience it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Jesus answered and said unto him, that was the main thing. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, anyone that wants to be with Christ forever, 
that want to see the kingdom of God, here is the first step. Yeah. And Jesus knew the importance of salvation, and he knew that Nicodemus needed salvation, and he told him, you must be born again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And Nicodemus did not understand salvation, as some people may not. He said, how can I, being an old man, enter the second time into my mother's womb? He was talking of spiritual birth here. Yeah. And he said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So th there is the qualification. Yeah. If we want to go to heaven, salvation yeah. is a must. Amen. We can do everything without salvation, and it will not amount to anything. Right. But we want to thank God that when we get the right thing, mm. when we get salvation, yes. when we are changed, yes. then we have it all. Yes. Yes. You know, what I quite like about uh, Nicodemus' record, it is the conversation that brought about the great message that holds the theme of the Bible. Mm. For God so loved the world. Yes. That was the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. Yeah. As he went on to converse with him, he told him that no man hath ascended up unto heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Mm. He was telling him, and he went on to tell him, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And everyone that looked up to that serpent that was lifted up, yeah. they were healed. Yes. Amen. Even though they were beaten by snakes, they did not die. Right. But those that did not look up to that bronze serpent, they were beaten and they died in their, in their condition. But I want to thank God that if anyone looks up to Jesus yes. the same way the children of Israel looked unto that bronze snake and they, were, they did not die even when they were beaten by snakes, anyone that has sinned in their life, mm. if they look up to Jesus, Amen. beholding the Lamb of God, yes. they will be saved Amen. and sin will not reign in them. Amen. They will be, have liberty from Amen. sin. They will be delivered from any form of bondage because yeah. there is power in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And he went on to say, For God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Those that look to Jesus yeah. and get this salvation, this born again experience, yeah and live by it, they will have eternal life. Yes. Yes. Glory be to Amen. God. Amen. I want to thank God that he appeared to many. I can keep on and on and on telling you, those that met Christ, how about Lazarus? He has eternal life, isn't it? Say to Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. Amen. Amen. When we die, if we have Christ in us, yeah. we will rise up again at the sound Amen. of the trumpet. Amen. And we will live forever with him Amen. after we behold the Lamb of God. Yeah. We have to look to him and we have every hope of eternity when we believe on him. Paul the Apostle, when he was on his way to Damascus, we know Paul was persecuting the church of God. And when Christ met him, when he saw him, amen, that great light that appeared to him, and he saw him, he changed him. He became a great man of God, an apostle for Jesus Christ. He sent him to preach to the Gentiles. So we, you know, God can use us also yeah. in the same way. Yeah. How about Stephen, the deacon? As he was being stoned to death, he saw him. 
and standing at the right hand side of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he saw him, he said, forgive them. These that are stoning me to death, they don't know what they're doing. When we see Christ, yeah. when we see Christ, yeah. you know, whatever people may do to you, when you see Christ, you keep looking up to him because you'll be seeing the glory of God. Amen. And you want to keep looking up to him. Amen. You want to keep looking to the cross, Amen. knowing that those that continue looking unto him, there awaits a great salvation yeah. for us. Amen. In the, just after the Dark Ages, there was a man called Martin Luther. He saw him. And when he saw him, he wrote this 95 thesis, proving that the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He was just quoting the Bible. Yeah. You know, when, when we believe the word of God, God will do great things for us. Yeah. And when we just look up to God, and look up to his word for, you know, it, it is through faith in God that we are saved. Amen. Amen. Not just Martin Luther in this country. We had the likes of John and Charles Wesley. Yeah. How God used them mightily preaching this great salvation. Yeah. Likes of George Whitefield, John Knox, you name them. And some like David Livingstone went as far as Africa. Preaching Christ to people. And they did great works for him. Now this same God, this same Jesus, when we look to him, he can purify us. He can yes. sanctify us all. Yes. And we know he is the one, after he has saved us, who sanctifies us through and through. Yes. Through his blood. Yes. And we thank him. We don't only end there. After we've been sanctified, holy, purified, we can consecrate our lives. Yeah. And he promised us, he said, those that look up to him, he will send them his spirit. He said, ye shall receive power. Yeah. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Yeah. And that is the promise that he gave them. Yeah. And he said, you will go out in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, preaching Christ. Yes. I want to look up to him. Yes. In the last century, we had great revival in Azusa Street. Yes. They saw him. Yes. He appeared to them. Amen. And when he appeared to them, we have the likes of uh, the founder of our church, Sister Florence Crawford, and the button was passed on from her to her son. And it continues. Yeah. They saw him yeah. and they loved him yeah. and they preached him yeah. and they continued to, to proclaim him. Yeah. And we pray that anyone that looks to him, yeah. they will be saved from their life of sin. Yeah. The problem of this world is sin. Yeah. And I want to thank God that when we look to Jesus, yeah. he takes away the sin of the world. Yeah. We want to have victory over sin yeah. every day. Yeah. We don't want a gospel that makes us servants of sin. We want a gospel that liberates us yeah. and gives us power to live above sin. Yeah. Because in the same John chapter 1, it says, Ye shall receive, John chapter 1, ye shall receive power. Amen. Amen. I'll read uh, John chapter 1. As many as received him, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. So we get power. Power for what? To live a life above sin yeah. when we have Christ in us. Yeah. You know, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. There is that great salvation that we are waiting for. Yes. So he will appear again. Amen. To those that look unto him, yes. may you and I be counted amongst that number Amen. of those that are looking up. Amen. He says, behold, your salvation draweth nigh. Look up Amen. and want to keep looking up. And when we do so, 
consecrating our lives every day, every now and then, we will hear the trumpet, Amen. whether by way of the fact that we have died and will rise again, or we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at his appearance. He is coming. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Have you seen him? Have you beheld him? Yes. Christ is calling. Amen. You can come to the altars and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power in your word. We thank you for the effect that is had on us. We pray that as we, we, we pray that you will speak to our hearts and, and help us to surrender our lives so that you can work your power in us. Everything that we need on this journey, please supply, save, sanctify, baptize, revive this morning, equip us for heaven, help us to be a strong, mighty army heading towards heaven and heaven alone. May there not be anyone left on the wayside. Thank you for this morning, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.